Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what updates and progress has been made on the development of the Signalis multiplayer mod. For those who are unaware, I am working on, with the help of a good friend named Frap and another friend named Z, on making a co-op multiplayer Signalis mod, so that way you can go relive your promise with all of your best buds. The mod is still in a very early developmental stage, but two weeks ago, we released a public data test to be able to try and gather more data to try and make this development move a bit faster as we're able to test more and really understand where the problems lie at a faster rate. I was supposed to have an update out last week, but I got sick, so I was unable to do so. So instead, this week I'll be talking about all the progress that has been made in the last two weeks and what our goals are moving into the future. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. Alrighty, so since two weeks ago, we have a couple of things to talk about regarding updates. First, we're going to talk about the initial testing period, how that went. Then we're going to talk about the build that released last week and kind of the chaos that followed around that and, and why and what has been improved, why that build came out. And then finally, we're going to talk about the build that came out yesterday, what status updates are with that, and where this testing really needs to be focused on at the moment. And then finally, of course, we're going to talk about the future and uh, future plans. So first things first, let's talk about the initial build. The initial build that released after I released the last video on this topic had some real user issues regarding setup. And that's because if you watch that video, CDMP is pretty complicated to set up. You have to set up Melon Loader, you have to set up Hamachi, you have to set up IP things, you have to set up this config file. And what we're hoping is as more people test, we're gonna be able to smooth out this process and make better guides and better explanations so that way people who run into hiccups along that experience are able to not exactly run into those hiccups that were warned previously. So that is something we have acknowledged and addressed and we're trying to improve setup uh, configurations so it's less of a headache on y'all. But pivoting to what happened after that initial test period, we released a new build, I think it was Friday of last week. And that build had good intentions, but did not exactly go very well. So the goal of that build was in early testing, if you watched the last video and you saw the footage, uh, there was kind of an issue where movement was desynchronized uh, between the two clients. And we calculated that the delay is noticeable. It's like, if I put in an input on my keyboard, the delay from you receiving it was large enough that it would cause gameplay issues, especially when we're going to be starting talking about, like, re-edge where you have enemies and stuff. And that was just not allowed. So to fix that issue, we changed the, by we I mean FRAP, FRAP changed the central message handler from working originally off of a queue system that processed every single message and alternated it to a more of a process-based system where it only saves the relevant messages and sends the relevant messages, which means the overall message count decreases, allowing speed to increase. This is a great idea. Um, it was really just so more, we had some, some spaghetti code issues. CDMP is a massive file, which means when you change things, sometimes it has unintended consequences. And in this case, because me and Frap were extremely busy, those unintended consequences resulted in a build being out for five days that just didn't work. So we had a lot of testers telling us that they just couldn't even get anything to load, everything was crashing, and that is because there was some, some memory issues um, in that code where it was caching information that just didn't exist. So that has been fixed in the newest build that released yesterday. Uh, we now have the both the goal of that build implemented and a actual working version of it. So now what happens is CDMP will only send the relevant movement data that it needs. And it also now has a Boolean handler. So that way, if bulls are sent, those being uh, logical arguments, those will be stored long enough to actually be implemented. To put it in plain English and get it out of all this programming jargon, Movement is going to be more synchronized with what's actually happening on the other player's side. It's going to be smoother and we have greater control of it, which means we can do things like animations and other things to make it look better. And logic will now actually work. So if somebody actually picks up something, you'll know, as in it'll actually work and actually pick it up for you and not completely break everything. And those are all great news. It essentially means that we can uh, begin working on some of the more complex logic now that some of the more basic stuff is complete. So I briefly mentioned there, we can begin working on complex logic. Let's start talking about the future. So the future is re-edge. Uh, re-education, the first major arc of the game out of the Penrose and Penhole. 
And that arc is where you get basically the tutorial, you get cutscenes like Issa, you're getting um, enemies, you're, you have the star, you have dialogue, you have a lot of moving pieces. Um, and that's kind of going to be one of these situations where once we get through Re-Edge, we can probably get through the rest of the game very easy. The rest of the game is not going to be a headache. But Re-Edge is going to be this situation where we really are going to have to implement a lot of new systems to be able to handle all the new things that are introduced in Re-Edge. Um, so on that note, what, what is the status, I'm sure, is the question. Like, how close are we to actually getting through Re-Edge? Well, in the newest build, we actually implemented a system that handles enemies and essentially means that we can now tell from the host to the client what is going on with the enemies. Is it perfect? No, it still needs a lot of work, but it's a step in the right direction, and it means we might start being able to handle enemies from a server side rather than just locally how it is handled at the moment. And what that would translate to is proper gameplay. You know, we don't want it to be that player A and player B both see different enemies. That destroys the entire point of multiplayer. Um, and being able to bring them onto the same kind of level, same position, same HP, same situation, that is going to be the role. So that's the first thing we need to look at. Second thing is cutscenes and how are cutscenes going to be handled. Cutscenes are going to be a, a complex dynamic. It's going to require the Boolean handler to be greatly updated from where it is now. But it's going to be one of those things that once it's figured out, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Once we figure out how to make Isa appear on the screen when one person talks to Isa, it's not going to be a lot of work to go, okay, let's do it for the star, let's do it for this, let's do it for that. Um, and once that's done, once we figure that out, great progress is going to be made. The final thing is animations. Um, and I, I think I did mention it a little bit ago, but I, I'm going to bring it back up again. It, animations for movement is something we're getting closer and closer to now that we have this updated movement data, we have updated um, message data, we have faster processing speeds. It means that we can start handling, uh, making Elster not look like she's teleporting about the place, like she's a Roblox character with a little lag, and more so look like she's Elster. Uh, in order to implement animations, though, we need to currently dig through the code and find out what is controlling Elster's animations. And that's kind of where the headache is at the moment, as we have not figured out exactly what that is. But the good news is, you know, if we figure that out, the problem is solved. We can easily implement it, easily put it into the code, um, and that would be another update. So that's everything we're working on for the future, everything that's in the current build, uh, everything that happened over the last week. For those who stuck around in regards to testing for this session, the testing scope has not changed from last time. We need to see if people can get this thing set up and running and if the bullions actually work in the pen rows. So I appreciate all of y'all that stuck through this. I hope you all are as excited for this project as I am. I'm really hopeful that we make some good progress over the next couple of weeks. But until then, this has been Chris Reviews, and I'll see you all next time.